Hi, I'm Alec Nixon. And I'm Dominic Huang. Let's talk about Bose-Einstein condensation. Physicist Satyendra Nath Bose felt that Planck's constant of blackbody radiation, whilst it useful, was lacking, as all previous attempts to derive it relied on classical mechanics. In 1924, Bose sent a paper with a statistical derivation of the Planck distribution law for photons to Albert Einstein, who translated it into German and submitted it for publication. In 1924 and 1925, Einstein published two additional papers on Bose's work, extending it to describe massive particles as well as photons. This combined work, known as Bose-Einstein statistics, is where we get the term boson, which is the class of particle defined as those whose behavior Bose-Einstein statistics describes, which we now know are particles of integer spins. As a result of this new model, Einstein predicted that if the particles in a system cannot cease to exist when their energy is decreased, even if they do not interact, then there would be a temperature at which they would experience a phase transition and condense to the lowest possible quantum state. This is because as the energy of the system is decreased, the number of states is very limited and cannot contain the particles in different states, forcing them all to occupy the ground state. Both Einstein condensation or BEC is the phenomenon in which bosons that are sufficiently close together and moving at sufficiently low speeds make the transition into the same lowest quantum state. But what is sufficiently close and sufficiently slow? In 1924, de Broglie expressed the wavelength of massive particles as lambda equals Planck's constant over the momentum of the particle. And as momentum is equal to mass times velocity, we can say that lambda equals Planck's constant over mass times velocity. Which is all just to say that the slower a particle goes, the longer its wavelength will be. Condensation occurs when the wavelength of the particles is in the same order of magnitude as the distance between them. When the de Broglie waves of our bosons overlap, they form a single concurrent wave that can be described with a single wave function like that of an atom. For this reason, both Einstein condensates are sometimes called superatoms. Great! So now that we know what they are, how do we make one? Well, the first step is to isolate some atoms into a vacuum. Then we use a technique called laser cooling or Doppler cooling. In laser cooling, we have six lasers pointing at our atoms from each direction, with a frequency just below the resonant frequency of the atoms. By doing this, we cause the atom to absorb photons and their momentum only when it's coming towards the lasers, blue shifting the laser into the resonant frequency. In other words, the photons are only absorbed by the electrons, where their motions are opposing each other. The energy gained by the atom by absorbing the photon is then re-emitted as another photon in a random direction. Because photons are absorbed when they oppose the motion of the atom and are emitted randomly, the net effect is to reduce the total momentum of the atom, bringing us within the millikelvin range. But we need to cool the atoms even further, to nanokelvin temperatures. To do this, we use a technique we are all familiar with, evaporation. Just like substances we encounter in our daily lives, the atoms of our soon-to-be condensates are moving around randomly and bumping into each other, giving some of them more energy than the others. We can imagine the magnetic fields like a mug, and the atoms like the delightful warm beverage in the mug. Similar to how high energy particles in our beverage can exceed the force of the bonds holding it in the mug and escape. If an atom in our cloud has enough energy, it can escape the magnetic fields. As it escapes, it takes that energy with it, reducing both the total and average energy in the system. And this finally takes us into the nano Kelvins, where condensations can occur. Both Einstein condensations were first successfully created in 1995 by Eric Cornell and Carl Riemann and Wolfgang Kettler using rubidium and sodium atoms respectively, for which they shared the 2001 Nobel Prize in Physics. The successful creation of Bose-Einstein condensates have done two great things for physics. It has provided strong, supporting evidence that our understanding of quantum mechanics is correct, and it has a myriad of research applications, such as superconductors, condensed matter physics, 
and mesoscopic quantum physics measurements, just to name a few. There's a bright, albeit cold, future for physics ahead.